Hello, welcome to the Landed Cat Kayak. My name is Laurel. And today I'm going to do a flip through of intermediate language lessons. So there is a primary language lessons for this um, that comes before this that was written by Emma Searle. But I just don't, I've looked at it. Uh, I, I actually printed it out at some point. I will put links to the free versions of this um, intermediate and um, primary language lessons in the description box for you so you can look at them or print them out if you want as well as links to hard copies if that's what you prefer. When I was looking for a beginning grammar program for my kids I was really looking at um, primary language lessons and gentle grammar and gentle grammar is it's like a reformatting of what's it? It's like the author's name was CC Long, and I had a different name, but Sherry over at Mom Delights reformatted it in the workbook format, and I just really liked her layout and stuff, and it's really easy to read. And so I went with Gentle Grammar for our primary years for grammar, which is, which so it would cover like the same kind of you know grade levels that the primary language lessons would cover. So yeah, so I don't need it. And I now, I, I needed something for the next step up. I was, have been interested in looking at this one. So I just went ahead and ordered it. So I wanted the hard copy because I just have my kids do their work in their notebooks. You know, like either are everything notebooks or unofficial RC notebooks. So I didn't really um, need to, I know there are, um, I, will, I will link another place where you can find the primary and intermediate language lessons in a workbook format. It, you have to buy it, but I think it's pretty affordable. And the gal who wrote it also, I think you also can get a teacher's manual. I haven't looked at them. Like I haven't seen them. I just saw that they're there. So I will link those for you also as a third option. But so I bought this and then um, Catherine Andrews and Mary Jane Newcomer wrote a teacher guide. So these are, uh, this is a more modern, um, resource that was made to complement Emma Searle's original. So I got them both. Um, I just bought them on Amazon and I got used, you know, copies to save a little bit of money, but they're still like in good shape. Okay. So let's just take a look at the primary textbook to begin with. So this one was printed in 1996. It was originally printed in 1914. So the text has been updated and edited only where necessary. So yeah, when you find the, like what's in the public domain, those PDFs that you can print, they, there may be slight differences in this version because they have had some updates. So the purpose of this book is to aid pupils to speak and write the English language correctly. This book is intended especially for use of pupils in the fourth, fifth, and sixth grades. It may, however, be adjusted to suit different conditions found in more advanced classes. Um, so yeah, if primary language lessons was used in the last half of the second grade and through the third, the pupils will prepare to begin intermediate language lessons in the fourth grade. So yeah, so like my Will, he could finish the four gentle gra grammar levels, he's in third grade, um, this year and this, uh, this summer. And so he could start this one um, next year. So attention is called to the following features, literature studies, not only in poetry, but also in fine prose selection, letter writing on subjects that appeal to child life and including simple forms of business letters, drill on correct forms of speech and words often misused, many exercises to increase the pupil's vocabulary, the making of outlines and writing and talking from outline, outlines, sorry. The various forms and composition, including description, narration, conversation, dialogue, debate, and the writing of rhymes. Both reproduction and original work in oral and written composition. Sequence and careful graduation and arrangement of lessons. The careful treatment of capitalization and punctuation. Observation lessons, which furnish material for talking and writing. Lessons on civic subjects, such as the... School, the court, the state, cleanliness of streets, and needed improvements. The oral composition and connection with the observation lessons not only aid the pupil in telling readily and accurately what he has seen, but give him self-possession and train him to logical thought. 
When an essential fact is taught, the pupil is given practice in using the facts again and again through dictation, reproduction, and original composition. Yeah, so I'm not like 100% sure I'm going to use this book um, or not. I'm going to I'm going to reassess my McGuffey reader language arts plan. Um, but I don't want us to add anything in that's like duplicate, you know, and overcomplicate our lives. <laughs> so, but I, I did, I was like, I've been looking at this for years. <laughs> and I was like, I just want to get it. And I wanted to see what the teacher guide had in it. So I'm doing research here and it was, they're, they're pretty affordable. So I don't feel bad, you know, about making the purchase for research reasons, but maybe this will help you decide if this is something you want in your homeschool. So the lessons looks like there are a lot. So the first part, so there's a hundred part two goes through lesson 195 and part three to 301. So I'm assuming that's to cover fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So this book is going to, in theory, is going to give you three years worth of grammar and like composition instruction. So here in the, um, in all caps, like these, these are all like reading passages. So they have a selection for study and then they have some kind of grammar concept. So the first selection is uh, the finding of Moses. And then they go over names of persons and places. And then the next one is the stone in the road. Then the selection to be memorized, composition, selection for study. So, so interesting. I'm looking for I'm looking for a pattern here. So do you want me to read to you some of the titles? The Finding of Moses, The Stone in the Road, A Prince Story, The Wise Fairy, The Flower Girl, The Robin, Description of a Bird. The Red-Headed Woodpecker, An Indian Legend, um, Helen, so the, Helen Keller, Helen Keller to O.W. Holmes, The Apple Tree. So I don't know, I don't know all of these. But it looks like over here it said, thanks are due to authors and publishers for use of the following copyright material. Helen Keller and Doubleday, Page and Company. There's selections from Longfellow, uh, I don't know if this is Whittier, Lowell, Holmes, Alice, and Phoebe, Carrie, Lucy, Larcom, Celia, Thaxter, J.G. Sachs, and Frank D. Sherman. Frank D. Sherman. Anyway, so I, I love when there's a table of contents in there. From a painting by Della Roche, The Finding of Moses. So the illustrations are in black and white. But I like them. Okay, so that wasn't that long. So read the story and tell it. So I'm, I, I think commonly we would say like, you know, retelling or a narration, retell, retell us what you just read. Describe the picture. Let's see, see, see my first question would be, um, is that, you know, an oral exercise or is that something that they do on paper? So, cause if they're in like fourth grade, they should be able to write some stuff on their own by now, right? Let's see what the teacher's guide says. Do you want me to read the publisher's note? Recognizing the need to return to more traditional principles in education, Lost Classics Book Company is republishing forgotten late 19th and early 20th century literature and textbooks to aid parents and teachers in the education of their children. This guide is designed to accompany intermediate language lessons, which was reprinted from 1914 copyright edition. The guide contains all the original questions and exercises from the reader, along with suggested answers. It also includes new extended activities that reinforce and enhance the original study sections. In most cases, items that appear in the textbook for dictation lessons are not repeated in the guide for the sake of brevity in an effort to produce a more affordable guide for the teacher and parent. Some exercises have responses that are impossible to predict. As some examples, at times, examples of possible responses are given at other times, the parent or teacher must evaluate each response from cues in the exercise's description. There have been multiple printings of this grammar text. While we strive for perfection, there will be rare errors or omissions in different printings. Okay, so this looks like this copyright was 2008. 
They're, the activities in this edition will meet the following objectives. The student will identify words and construct meaning from text and illustration, phonics, and context clues. Huh. So that, that just makes me pause because I was under the impression that, um, I know this is a little bit older, it's currently 2024, but that the science of reading, what people have been learning from that is that context clues are out, <laughs> context clues are out and morphology is in, <laughs> phonics and morphology are in, right? So yeah, like I just like when I read the my McGuffey readers with the when the well I read them when the kids are reading to them. Well, I just did a recent morning basket video. I'll link it for you in the description box. It's really short, but um, I will have my uh, my two oldest boys are reading to me, and we will go over the lesson words, and especially like my uh, my older my oldest his he's in the fourth reader and there are definitions. Um, there's words that are defined for each lesson. And so we will uh, read the definitions and then we will also discuss, we will then talk about, okay, so if that's what the definition is, then what does it mean in this sentence? What is the sentence saying now that you have that extra piece of information? And um, we also are simultaneously, like, you know, we've separated out vocab for our own um, its own little subject uh, for him. So he's learning about affixes and root words, you know, he's studying that. So as we see words like that in his reader, we're like, oh, look, there's, this one has a, do you remember what this suffix mean or what this prefix means? And so we just stop and have those kind of discussions. Like he studies it, but then like we apply it to his reading. Um, so we do not, and I remember that was in when I was in school. I remember our teachers saying, like specifically saying to look for context clues. Like we had to think, we had to think about the word in its context, which really only, I've told the kids, that really only matters if there's a word that has more than one meaning that's like totally different, you know, th th which comes up like all the time. So you're like, okay, since they're, it's in this sentence, are they using its first definition or its second? And then we're like, oh, obviously we know it's, it only makes sense if it applies to whatever definition, you, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, that's like, to me, that's a negative, but so it's of its time. That's where the, that's what the education world was doing at the time. So since this is my copy, so phonics is good, but no, uh, context clues, I was going to say for multiple meaning words. And then I'm going to say study. Uh, morphology. <clears throat> okay, interesting. So right here it says, the student will determine the main idea through illustrations. The student will recognize basic patterns and functions of language. I was just thinking another thought about main idea. Like usually you're asking kids to Maybe that's maybe that's just at the beginning. I don't know. I wonder if that changes over time too, because you don't want kids. Their reading comprehension shouldn't be dependent on illustrations, right? They should be. They should get the reading. They should be able to read something with or without illustrations and be able to discern what the main idea is, and then give, you know, the reasons why the the evidence of that. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna do. What? Making notes to myself. The student will recognize basic patterns and functions of language. The student will understand that word choice can shape ideas, feelings, and actions. The student will use and identify repetition, rhyme, and rhythm in oral and written text. The student will use text and previous readings to make predictions. The student will use a simple outline. The student will use knowledge of developmental level vocabulary in reading. The student will increase comprehension by summary and discussion. The student will recognize the beginning, middle, and end in passages. The student will write questions and observations about familiar topics, stories, or new experiences. The student will analyze an author's perspective, noting the differences between fact and opinion. The student will use reference materials to obtain information. 
The student will justify an argument with logical, relevant reasons, clear examples, and supporting details. The student will retell details of information, including sequencing of information. The student will produce final documents that have been edited for correct spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and sentence structure. The student will use knowledge and experience to tell about experiences or to write for familiar occasions, audiences, and purposes. The student will follow simple sets of instructions for simple tasks using logical sequencing of steps. The student will use different forms of words, including contractions, possessive nouns, and past, present, past, and future tenses. The student will determine how to draw conclusions from text. The student will understand sentence varieties, paragraph writing, and punctuation. Okay, so most of that sounds good to me. I'm going to keep my eye on uh, the context stuff and whatnot. So, so if they run lesson one, selection for study, right? So it's really, a, it's really a short read. Okay, so read the story and tell it. Describe the picture. Okay, something you have the kid do with their own book. Teacher note, the finding of Moses was painted by Paul de la Roche, a popular French painter, <laughs> French painter in the early 19th century, born in 1797 in Paris as Hippolyte de la Roche, later known as Paul. He began exhibiting his works in 1822. He specialized in paintings that depicted historical and religious subjects, such as this painting of the finding of Moses. His works were characterized by their attention to detail. De la Roche died in 1856. I'm going to see if I can look up that painting and see it in color. Okay, so it's called The Finding of Moses de la Roche. Look, there it is in color. This is the kind of thing I would do. I would I'd print it out in color so that my kids could cut it out and put it in their notebooking pages. So this is fun because it gives some extended activities. Uh, the king's daughter named the baby Moses because she drew him out of the water. I think that's the meaning. As seen in this work of art, it says research the meaning of their names, like the kids have researched the meaning of their own names, and write a brief report detailing the events surrounding their births. In the report, answer the following questions. What is your name? What does it mean? How was your birth unique? Who was there? How did your family celebrate your arrival? The story of Moses is most often depicted through artwork showing his cradle floating in the Nile from which he got his name. Have the students create a piece of art that depicts the meaning of their names. So yeah, that's something that's easy enough to do if they are able to write. I wonder if you could, if it's a report. Sometimes people do those as just like more like fill-ins, you know, like name and they write their name, da 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 da. But this would be nice if they were able to write, practice like paragraph writing, you know, or like you know, as like a narration. I guess that that is a narration. It's a personal narration, isn't it? So then, day t lesson two. I'm thinking like the very next day is names of persons and places, right? So this is, you know, proper nouns. From the story, the finding of Moses copy, the name of the baby, the name of the baby's sister, the name of the king. With what kind of letter does the name of a person or place begin? Right, capital. Make a rule for this use of the capital letter. Are they wanting, maybe they're wanting them to write two countries, five boys, two celebrated men, four cities, two states, and five girls. Is that what they want them to do? See, this, this has um, an answer key in it. Yeah, they said write the names of, yeah. Okay. So sometimes they have, like, she says, have an oral composition. So tell a story showing how one of the children spent the money foolishly and one wisely. Kids love to tell stories. So that's, like, the very beginning. Let's skip to, like, let's skip to something in the middle. And so here we've got lesson 105 is on indirect quotations. Let's see, what is that coming from? Usually it's after they've read a, okay, oh, it's part two. The story of a seed is the selection for study. Long, long ago, two seeds lay beside each other in the earth waiting. It was cold and rather wearisome. And to pass the time, the one found means to speak to the other. Sounds like the beginning of a joke, huh? There's the reading and then there's a note. Oh, that's by George MacDonald. I love George MacDonald. Sometimes a direct quotation is divided by other words. As for me, reply the first, I mean to be a rose. I like that note. Observe carefully the punctuation of the divided quotation. In this lesson, find exclamations, contractions, divided quotations. Tell the story of a seed. So again, they're like telling it back. 
use in sentences the words wearisome, patiently, delicious, refreshing, inclined, dismayed, yielded, straight way. Seems pretty straightforward. Let's see if she has like anything different from lesson 101. She is giving, they're, they're giving extended activities. So in lesson 35, um, ex extended activity B, the students learn that point of view is the position or angle from which a story is written or told. What point of view does the writer of this story take? What words or phrases does the writer use to show point of view? And there's an example how the answers they could give. The writer uses the third person omniscient point of view. Sentences that show third person omniscient point of view are, and then they wrote, they copied the. Um, so, do they teach them the points of view in here? It's weird because I don't see it. No. Oh, look what's at the back Venn diagram. You can make copies of these envelopes. Story map, cool. I do like that. Ooh, rubrics for student evaluation. Excellent. And they're nice and simple. Sometimes I get like that. I see these rubrics, and there's like, it's like a whole page, like landscape, and like every single. I'm like, it's a little bit overwhelming. So I like how simple that that is. Okay, I don't see an index in there. I want to see if there's an index. Maybe they don't, I don't see that they went over point of view. So maybe if you get to something like that, you're supposed to teach it real quick. Let me see if it says point of view. This one has an index. Mm -mm. I don't see it. I wonder if they use a different word for it back then. So that may, I mean, that may just be a concept that she's added on, but I didn't see that it was taught. But I, I could just, I could be missing it. I guess if, you, if I came to something like that and it hadn't been taught, I would probably grab, I'll show you what I would grab. Probably maybe this. Yeah, narration and point of view, 194. First person, second person, third person. So yeah, I might, you might need to grab, you might have to grab some something. So let's see, lesson two, dictation. Write from dictation, the first 12 lines of the story of a seed. Um, the next day, divided quotations. Change the following to divided quotations. The first replied, I mean to be a rose. There's nothing like a splendid rose. So you'd want to divide that up and do the correct punctuation and everything. Let me see what hers looks like. I mean to be a rose. The first replied, there's nothing like a splendid rose. Okay. So yeah, it's nice that this is here to check because like, I don't want to be having to like look up the proper <laughs> punctuation. <laughs> so I do like having this for that. Write quotations, each of which shall be divided by one of the following expressions. Replied the soldier, shouted the north wind, said the barefoot boy. Okay, let's see something from like towards the end of the book. It's a picture study. Selection for the horse's prayer. Pretty short read. And then it says, mention some ways in which a horse should be cared for. Mention some ways in which a horse should not be treated. And the selection, find words in series. Um, I guess that I'm, I'm guessing they're wanting you to do all the commas, like a list. Give the rule for the punctuation of words in a series. Find the nouns. Write the nouns in the singular in one list, those in the plural in another. So I want you to find all the plural and singular nouns. Okay, let's see what lesson 246, what she has in here. Words in a series are provide me with a shelter, a clean dry bed and a stall. Yeah, so like listing multiple things. Never strike, beat, or kick. Oh, they didn't, she doesn't use the Oxford comma. And give me clean, cool water. Oh, there must've been more to it. Oh, there was more things to answer. So the next day, read the, read the horse's prayer again. Okay. Then write a dog's prayer, how cute. Let your composition tell of ways in which dogs are sometimes neglected or abused. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's good for, te for teaching empathy for animals, right? Let me see what she says on that lesson. Oh, then she says, use the essay rubric on page 220 to evaluate this composition. Okay, so they write, they do that composition and then it's on page 220. Let's see what that looks like. This one. Audience and purpose contains an engaging introduction, main idea clearly stated. 
organization, so well organized, the transitions, helping to link words and ideas for a second, most important, finally, etc. Elaboration, this essay is effectively developed with specific details, use of language with spelling, varies sentence structure and makes good word choices, grammar, punctuation, leg legibility, handwriting, right? And then you rate it one to five. But then always, I always like rubrics because it tells you like what to have them like, like tell them like, what are we going to really focus on for next time? And you like, if you keep the score, you can see if they're improving over time, if their scores are improving. I, when I made my, um, I did include writing rubrics for my um, McGuffey companion notebooks. And that was something, so that's something I do really uh, appreciate about that. Um, lesson two, okay, so then let's say the next day, so they did a composition, adjectives and nouns the next day. Copy the following adjectives and write after each a suitable noun, right? So they have one like porous. So if they didn't know what these meant, they'd have to look them up. It's good for them to do. Summary, continued from lesson 195 to remember. Oh, and so this part in bold is like a teaching section. The part of a sentence that names that about which something is said is the subject. The part of the sentence that says something about the object named by the subject is the predicate. So I would say the subject is who or the what, the predicate is the action part. When two or more subjects are united, they form a compound subject. Okay, so just some uh, introducing some of that stuff. And here's a new selection for study. Nice, I like it. I wonder what the very last thing they do is. So like the very last thing of sixth grade, there's just, there's just kind of more teaching. Write a description of a pleasant bedroom. Tell about the wallpaper, windows and curtains, the furniture and the good order in which it is kept. Make your description so clear that others will see the picture as you do. So they're working on their descriptive writing. Nice, which is why they were studying adjectives, right? They all, like they're talking about similes. Cool. Okay, I like it. I like that all three years is in this one book and it's cute. <laughs> it's three years. Cute and affordable, compact. I love that. Okay. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to think hard about I have to think hard about this one. This is this is good to have multiple good choices, right? But I do feel like I wouldn't do this like and the McGuffey readers because it's like more like one or the other, you know? Okay. Next time I will meet you back here to do a flip through of the advanced language lessons and to tell you a little bit more about that resource. And if you have any questions about this resource that I can, like anything I can look up for you, or if I, you think I didn't talk about something that you're curious about, let me know, leave me a comment, check out the free um, PDF version. I don't know if you can preview the other workbook I was telling you about, but check out the options where you can find this in the description box and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.